If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves it. It was that kind of can-do sentiment that sent us hurtling optimistically into a new decade. Sure, the year would have its negatives, the ominous rise of the Lombada, but it had a lot of hope, not to mention some super hot babes. And for that, 1990, I give you two snaps and a bag of chips. Remember, take care of yourselves and each other. 1991 taught us that despite appearances, we got a lot in common. While the kids of Compton dodged bullets, the kids of 90210 dogged retail. Yet they were all residents of La La Land. And who would have thought a children's television star and a Supreme Court candidate shared a common love? It just goes to show when you put the differences aside, you finally realize we're all naughty by nature. Remember, Sir mix a lot said it best. My anaconda don't want none unless you've got buns, hon. He really captured the mood of 1992. He knew what we wanted out of the decade. mix a lot wanted big butts, and he couldn't lie. Ross Perot wanted to be president, and Joey Buttafuoco, well, he wanted love. Remember that, and remember to take care of yourself. 1993 was a year of three willies. One was freed, one was chopped, and the other became the president of the United States. Only in this great country can a willie rise to such great heights. And I think that's a lesson for all of us. 1994 found us entering a period of doubt and confusion. Is figure skating truly a snake pit of violence and deceit? Can you really have that great grill taste without the fat? Even the year's unofficial slogan spoke of uncertainty. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. But amid all this doubt, we could all take comfort in knowing one thing for sure. If you play a mentally challenged person, it's Oscar time, baby, yeah! As you've seen, in 1995, we entered a new era of creative expression. And boy, did we get crazy. Hootie and the Blowfish, chat rooms, heroin chic, and the Rachel Dew were all the rage. 1995 taught us to go extreme, and if all else fails, nothing screams pay attention to me like a belly chain or tribal tattoo. So remember to take care of yourselves, your piercings, and each other. Show me the money. 1996 sure did that. But the year showed us so much more. Joan Osborne showed us that God could be one of us. The Macarena showed us that the spirit of the chicken dance was alive and well. 1997, it doesn't seem that long ago, but when you think about it, things were really different back then. The Spice Girls were still together, Callista Flockhart was still eating, and Evanda Holyfield still had two whole ears. But hey, things change. All you can say is, how bizarre, how bizarre. 1998 gave us a lot of gifts, you know. Music gave us the swing, and Bill Clinton gave us a new definition of what the word is, is. I had a hit show on the air, Mary got something in her hair, Will Smith got jiggy with it, and we all pretended like we knew what that meant. Frankly, I still don't know. But that's not the point. The point is tolerance of things you don't understand. In other words, Tinky Winky should be able to be anything he wants. Remember that. The end of a millennium. It was so big, almost hard to grasp. So much had changed. In the year 999, Christians were plotting to win an epic battle of world religions. By 1999, Susan Lucci had finally won a daytime Emmy. In 999, it was the monotonous chants of monks. By 1999, it was the enchanting rhythms of Mambo No. 5. In 999, we were using the abacus as a primitive calculator. By 1999, we were using the home computer to download, well, anything you want. Yes, we could truly say we come a long way, a long way. Happy millennium. And remember, take care of yourself and each other.